Here we have a new 2025 Buick and Vista. Now this one comes in the sport touring trim level. Beautiful color here, Cinnabar metallic. And then we have the jet black, or the ebony, excuse me, with the Santorini blue accented leather red interior. For the powertrain, we get a 1.2 liter turbocharged three cylinder, and that's made into a six speed automatic transmission. But as we come around to the front end here, I love the styling of the Invista. And the new tracks looks like really good, but the Invista just kind of does it for me. I love how it still has that same Buick flair to it with a nice kind of thin shark-like running lights. And then even down here having these beautiful 18 inch aluminum wheels. Love the turbine look there. And then the badging as well. And I like how these black mirrors kind of accent with the wheels and the badge in there. But passive keyless entry on the front, power door lock controls. We have one touchdown windows on all four doors and we have power mirror controls there, rear window lock, blind spot monitors in the side mirrors. I like the trim, they did a pretty good job with that. Headlamp controls, hood release, manual tilt, telescoping steering wheel. And then here's the power driver. See, we get two-way power lumbar support here. And I just think this one's under 28 grand. I think you get a heck of a deal here for what you get, honestly. But I wanna give a big thank you to Chevrolet Buick GMC of Murfreesboro for allowing me to review this Invista today. I'll leave a link below in the description. And if you're looking to get the best price on one of these in your area, just click on that second link down below. It takes a minute to fill out that info and I'll make sure your local dealers are fighting to get you the best price on one of these. But this one's stickers for 27,780, which honestly, I wouldn't even mind paying that. I just think you get so much again for the money. I don't know what that was. Let's go ahead and hop in the back here. Now having the seat up front adjusted for someone of my size being 6'3", longer legs, space back here is pretty good. I will say this, with how the roof slants back in the Invista, you do get more headroom in the tracks, but still not terrible. But my hair, I can feel it brushing against the roof line there. One thing I do like is I just did an LT, so I'm kind of comparing that with this sport touring, which this is going to be a higher trim, but still. We get a seat back pocket on the front passenger seat. We didn't get that in the tracks. I just did the LT. Love having a USB-C, USB-A charge port. And there's a view of the front. And big plus for me is that flat bottom steering wheel, which I'll get to that later, but I love the look of that, especially with the new logo that Buick has. No middle seat that folds down, I should say. There's a middle seat. Grab handle here. We can hang a plastic hanger or a couple metal hanger hooks right on there. Fuel fillers there. And these do take E85, which is impressive. I don't know what this was, a little plastic piece. I don't know if it came with this car or, or what. But child locks right there if you're curious. We'll get to that later. That was weird. Now, one thing I do love, again, with the Invista compared to the tracks is the rear end as well. Just looks beautiful. I love this back end. And it's just a sleek looking vehicle all the way around. Rear parking sensors are integrated very nicely in that rear bumper. And there is the cargo space. And this one has a, what is this? A front plate adapter that comes with it. But top tethers for the car seats are there. Spares right there. And again, I just kind of want to show you all. That's why you're losing headroom in the back is this roof slants down as opposed to having a more traditional look on the tracks. And then pretty easy to fold this down, hit that latch, folds flat. You can run longer objects through to the front. And then your bottom lower latch anchors are hidden right back in there if you ever need those. And I didn't realize how important that was until I had a, a baby and had to deal with a car seat. It does matter where those anchors are. <laughs> Here's a front passenger seat, glove compartment there. Like the trim.
And as we come back around to the front, again, we get that 1.2 liter turbocharged three cylinder. I don't know why it's so hard for me to say that. But let's go ahead and hop in the driver's seat, take a quick run through of the infotainment system, the steering wheel and all that. So there's the new steering wheel again. I love the look of that. There's the horn sound. Over here to the radio, I believe this is in 11 inch screen. So we get wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. If you click on that climate button, you can control the fan speed, direction, temperature, set the auto mode and all that. AM, FM, XM with Bluetooth. And then here you can toggle your traction control. And then finally, you have your, where you tend to find the stuff that's in your gauge cluster is right in here. So your trip meter, maintenance there, tire pressure monitors, oil life, then your air filter. And then you have your coolant temperature and battery voltage there. The only other thing in your settings, you can go through here, change your language, date and time, and then your units of measurement there. And then in your vehicle, you can go in here and do teen driver, rear seat reminder. Backup cameras there, guidelines follow you. You turn the steering wheel. Picture's decent, could be better, but this is a budget car, so I'm not expecting HD quality. Down here, single zone automatic climate controls, three stage heated seats. And then you have a USB-C, USB-A port there, 12 volt lane keeping system and auto stop toggle is there. And then again, this is a traditional six speed, so you can grab the lever behind, reverse neutral drive, and you have your limiter there. You can manually shift on the side. And right there at the bottom in the middle, you can see what gear you're in as you're shifting. Electronic parking brake, pull up to engage, hit the brake, press down to disengage. Bottle holders, storage, center console, cubby space. There's a view of the back seat from up here. And then vanity mirror. Now back to the steering wheel. Blinkers are here. High beams are there. You can toggle the auto high beams here. Flash, and then you have your intermittent wipers. One time off, intermittent low high. You can adjust that intermittent frequency here. And then pull up here for the front wiper fluid. And then behind the steering wheel on the left side, you can toggle that track list radio station preset. And then on the right side, volume up or down there. And now this one does have adaptive cruise, so you can toggle that, adjust the gap, set the speed, cancel. You can heat that steering wheel. And then you have your voice recognition, mute button, and you can go through your audio sources here. And then this is a scroll bar when applicable. And then you have your Bluetooth settings right in there. Now, if you hold this button when nothing else is up here, just show you you get the option to change your gauge faces so you can go through a thing like five options on how the gauge cluster looks so there's that and then you can go to this so it's pretty neat how you're able to adjust it depending on what you want push button start finally here's the key fob and we do get remote start there But next, let's go ahead and take this 2025 Buick and Vista Sport Touring out on the road for a test drive. Now, starting the test drive in the Vista, I like the 1.2 liter Turbo 3. Great pull for this small of an engine, this kind of displacement. And it's just, it is kind of fun to drive. Now, you don't get a very agile feeling ride or steering control, but it is nice to be able to make pulls in a straight line and feel that slight exhilaration from the turbocharger. Now I do like this as opposed to the tracks because again as much as I think the tracks looks good I feel like you get a much sleeker look and something that you don't see as many of because it is a bit more expensive as opposed to the tracks, but I mean, this is still, the tracks is still a very nice car, but this is just what I would take over the tracks. Only downside is again, that rear headroom with where the, 
the back is slanted. Give myself a little space and So I certainly wasn't flooring it there, but the tires try to spin a little bit. And again, these are 1.2 liter three cylinders and these things scoot quite a bit for what they are. Now we do have the adaptive cruise again. So we're gonna use that there. Lane keeping system we can turn on, but it's not like the Super Cruise, it's not a lane centering. Just kind of keeps you in the lines. But road noise, can't really notice it. Wind noise is a bit intrusive right now, but if you can see the trees, it is very windy outside. And you might've been able to hear that in the walk around portion of the video. But I mean, a solid ride. Driving dynamics for interstate driving are fantastic and again, you're getting 32 miles per gallon highway, 28 cities, so you can't beat the fuel economy. I mean, technically you could, but again, you get a pretty quick vehicle and a pretty inexpensive one at that. Now again, price point wise, you get a very good deal here. It's less than 28 grand. You get adaptive cruise control, you get blind spot monitors, you get an efficient powertrain. Single zone automatic climate controls, heated seats. You just can't beat what you get. And I think another thing that's not often considered is the looks of a vehicle. I think this is a much better looking option compared to some of the competition that you might consider. So the Hyundai Kona always comes to mind. The Honda HRV, and I don't even know if that'd be a, yeah, it's about a competitor now. They basically, everyone kind of does things at the same time. So I remember the HRV was itty bitty and the tracks was itty bitty. And then everybody, even the Nissan Kicks with that new redesign kind of took the place of the Rogue Sport. <clears throat> just making that feel bigger. So people are putting these smaller engines in here, more efficient engines, more efficient transmissions, and then they're able to make the cars bigger. So it's, uh, <clears throat> it's interesting. But I do think that this one looks probably one of the, if not the best, one of the best looking ones in the segment. But I wanna give one more thank you to Chevrolet Buick GMC of Murfreesboro for allowing me to review this Invista today. I'll leave a link below in the description. And if you're looking to get the best price on one of these in your area, make sure you click on that second link down below. It takes a minute to fill out that information and I'll get your local dealers fighting to get you the best price on one of these. But this one here does come with a lifetime powertrain warranty here at Chevrolet Buick GMC of Murfreesboro. All of their new vehicles do, not counting the electric ones, but that does kind of help you if you're concerned. I don't know if this, for whatever reason, I don't know why people think this, but people are always like, yeah, the three cylinders aren't gonna be reliable. The turbo is gonna mess up this, that, and the other. Well, this dealership stands behind the product. So if these start blowing up for whatever reason, you get the factory warranty, but then you also get that lifetime powertrain warranty. So if it 70, 80,000 miles and these things are out of warranty, you have that issue and you've kept up with your maintenance, so on and so forth, they'll cover the repair there. You pay like a hundred dollar deductible or something. So it's a sweet gig. If again, you are worried about a vehicle like that and you plan on trying to keep this 300, 400,000 miles, it's nice to have that coverage. <clears throat> But the Invista still, ever since it uh, came out recently, it's still impressive for what it is. And with all that being said, this will bring me to the end of my review of this 2025 Buick Invista Sport Touring.